Hi, this is Ed Gregory for PhotosInColor.com and today I'm going to show you how to fearlessly go for a color grade and style which is really particular in Lightroom. Theme tune. Okay, so today I'm going to be doing an edit for of a photograph that was sent in by somebody called Jacqueline Mavis on the Photos in Color Facebook page where you can submit your photographs, then I'll do an edit on it. And what I'm going to do today is something which is just go for a style. Just if you feel like you want to go for something, no matter what it is, just don't be afraid to go. That's going to be the color tone. That's going to be the feeling and the grade. And I'm just going to go and make that happen. So let's jump into Lightroom and have a look. So this is the photograph that we're going to be using today. It was sent in by Jacqueline. It was photographed on a um, Canon 7D 50mm f2.8 ISO 400. Let's have a quick look. Great, it's a little bit of grain in there, but I kind of like it. So let's go over to develop module, and this is what I want to talk about. She has beautiful auburn hair, or red hair, or ginger hair, or whatever you want to call it. She's also wearing a red scarf. There's also the red toning in the background. I love all of these things. It's also awesome. So for me, it's like, let's go for that color tone. Let's really go for it. My mom has red hair. My niece, Lily, who's amazing, has red hair. So I love this style and think she's so beautiful. So I really want to just go for that style. First thing that I would do with this image is crop it. She's hanging out at the bottom of that image. I would completely crop it down here and just bring her into the center of the image. Now already this has gone a huge distance. Now let's have a quick look. Let's, let's wipe out balance using this snow down here. Um, it's a gray piece of snow. And so we use the eyedropper tool here and we literally click on that and it will set that as the white balance. Um, I have a video on white balance if you're not sure how to do that. And you can see already it's like given this nice warm feeling to it. So I'm full on today in this edit going to be using this reddish color as my tone. So let's quickly have a look at the exposure of this. So if I hit down um, Alt or Option and as I slide it I can see as soon as it's not black anymore, like here, these areas are now completely blown out. Now that really kind of doesn't matter. This area is too blown out now. So let's just bring it back just here. That's good. Great. So we got to boost that a little tiny bit. Now let's have a look. I'm going to lift my contrast just a hair. I'm going to pull back my um, highlights like so. And I'm going to lift the shadows of this image. That's it for now, I really like that. Now the next thing we're gonna do is now we're gonna give this whole image this kind of a tone, this, this, this brownish, reddish tone, yellowish tone that's just gonna look so wonderful. To do that, we're gonna be able to move these colors around using the hue, okay? So at the moment, I'm gonna puddle everything slightly towards the orange and red side of things. So if this is my main orange slider, I'm gonna take the reds here, towards the orange side. Not a lot though, just a little bit. And then the yellow slider, rather than going towards the green, I'm now also going to go towards the reds. And what that does is the yellows go towards the orange and the reds go towards the orange, which now gives this feeling. Let's look at the before and the after. Look at that, you see? It already has this kind of an orange feel, but we're going to keep, keep doing this. So the saturation. I don't want to boost the saturation of these colors because that's what's going to really kill them and make them look horrible. So we're just going to leave those where they are. What we're going to do instead is reduce the saturation of this nice curve like so of the other colors. Now the reason I do it in a curve is to stop any like hard lines or banding that might happen. So the next thing we're going to do is look at the luminance. So the blues for example, now this is a really good example of why we do this curve. As I pull the blues back here, Look at what's happened to this image up here. Now we've got all of these horrible lines and things where I've pushed the image too far. So I don't want to be going that far at all. In fact, I'm, I'm, I'm just not going to pull it back. But what I can do though, if I was to be making this into a smoother curve, it would mean that the colors each side of it would go in the same direction and th those lines wouldn't be as bad. But I'm going to pull those back a little bit. 
and the luminance of the yellow, I'm going to lift up just a hair like this. And actually, we have this kind of a, a, a snake shape. But let's look at the before and the after of the HSL. No HSL? And then let's add it to it. Can you see, it doesn't do a lot. I'm not looking to change the whole image. That's not the idea. All it's doing is it's just giving it that feel. Now, this is the really important part, is in the shadows, I am also going to add a little bit of that tone. And look at that. So I've just gone for the oranges, the yellows. I know I'm gonna bring the saturation up a lot. I'm just gonna give it a little bit. And I'm even gonna do the same thing in the highlights. Now, if you're not sure what color you're gonna get, you wanna make your saturation really high and then slide it to the color that fits. So now I can see, oh, that's about the color that I like. And then you pull it back out and now it seems to blend a lot better. Do so the same thing with the shadows. The shadows, I think we can actually go into this tone, which is the purples. Yep, the pinky purples, which really work well with her skin tones. And again, we're just gonna pull it back. And we're gonna to go towards the shadow. So let's look at the before and the after. Let's look at the before and the after the whole image. Oh, we're really getting this beautiful feeling. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to work inside the tone curve. Now, let's start off by going to the RGB. Okay, so let's have a look what this does. This affects the entire image. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place three points onto this image. So I'm gonna bring back those shadows which is gonna allow me to lift up my highlights. It's adding a little contrast, and I'm gonna bring up the bottom here. So I'm actually just going to, there we go, just bring up those shadows a little bit. Let's look at the before and the after, I really like that. Now, what's important here is the reds. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift my reds overall, like so. And then what I'm gonna do is the same thing with the greens, but just a tiniest little bit. That means that it doesn't stay in the reds. It gives it a little a bit of a yellow to it. That's what happens when you get green and red together. And then the blue, I'm actually going to add a point in the middle because I'm going to add contrast using the blue. And if you watch what happens as I push this around, okay? So I'm going to push it up in the shadows and down in the highlights. That means all the highlighted areas are going to have less blue. It's going to go more yellow. But in the shadows, I'm going to add a little bit of blue, making it feel that bit colder because it is winter. So now let's look at the before and the after. And for me, this image is looking fantastic. I'm going to pull back my highlights because it's on her face. I want to pull it back a little bit. Looking amazing. Now I'm going to boost my vibrance but pull back my saturation. So that's, I'm boosting everything in the mid-tones, which is the vibrance, but I'm not just gonna overall just make it really, really too bright on those colors. Before and after. Now remember, I'm just allowing myself to go down this path and see how far we can go with this because it's so much fun, I think. She looks amazing. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to reduce the noise a little bit because we had some noise up here, but I'm not going to spend too much time on that. I'm just going to run, uh, averagely just boost it a little bit. And then my sharpening, I am going to sharpen the image a hair too. And I think that looks brilliant. Now, the last two things that I do want to do on this image, and this is what's really exciting, is the dehaze tool. So you can use it to add haze or dehaze. Now you can also use it as kind of a booster, a little bit like the clarity thing, where it's actually, if you pull it one way, it adds kind of like the, adds some contrast, but just to the mid-tones in my experience. So I really like to use that. Now, I'm gonna use the radio brush tool, because now I want to just work on her and bring in some focus into her. So I'm gonna reset the effect. I'm gonna not invert the mask, and I'm gonna pull back the exposure around her. So it's gonna make everything around her a little bit darker. But I'm only going to make it darker where she's looking into, I think. No, I'm gonna make it lighter where she's looking into. I'm gonna have it darker behind her. I'm gonna take the brush tool. I'm gonna to hit O so I can see the mask. The mask is too far on her hair. I'm gonna hit erase. And then I'm gonna erase this. Now remember, if I'm going too fast for you, which I might be, um, then I have tutorials on all of these different tools that I'm using here. 
What I'm doing here is I'm showing you how I would do a full edit. So now I'm pulling that back a little bit like so. Let's turn off that. Now that's starting to really, I'm just gonna pull it out randomly across there a little bit because I just wanna bring in some of those highlights again. Bring it back in the buildings and on a hand too. Brilliant. So now let's look at the before and the after of this image. Now for me, this image has come a long way and I think I'm gonna come in, I think I still have two, I'm gonna to have to pull back those highlights. I think I shouldn't have boosted the exposure that much. That's now looking a little bit better but I am gonna to have to lift up my shadows because of that. That for me, I'm gonna leave that as the image but what I'm gonna add in, just to show you that you can really change an image, I'm gonna throw in some grain onto this image and I'm gonna make it quite, not too rough, quite large. Again, I have a tutorial all on grain. In fact, let's make it more rough, but not quite as big, not quite as much. There we go, before and after. Let's come out here, before and after. Now, for me, this is a huge dramatic image and she looks stunning. So that there is how you can think about the feeling of an image and the color tone away you wanna go and fearlessly just target that. I went for the color orange and yellow and just went for it with every single move. And I think the final image is nothing short of stunning. Anyway, I really hope you liked this tutorial. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and tell me what other tutorials you would like to see by leaving a comment below. Hi, this is Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com and today I'm going to show you how to fierce, fearlessly. Mm. Hi, this is Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com and today I'm going to show you how to fierce, fearlessly, fearlessly. Mm. Hi, this is Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com and today I'm going to show you how to fear my name is Ed Gregory for Photos in Colour, photosincolour.com. Theme tune's probably already playing. I love this image.